you want to learn more about oscillating system okay there has a math we have a spring okay it's time for do some basic math as we just learned in the two videos before if a system can oscillate it's an oscillating system there are three values we keep in mind okay first will be the amplitude okay so this is the the value of displacement to below the rest point or on top so it will move up plus or minus this point around the zero line, okay? This can be write down as A, maybe. This is a value, okay? Another thing is, of course, the frequency. This depends on the frequency I put in, or if it's swinging on its own, it will be its natural frequency. We would normally describe it as omega, which is just frequency multiplied with two by P, because we are always thinking on circles. It's, it's, it's clever to do it this way, okay? As the third value, alpha, it is an angle that tells you how much it is delayed. It could be zero if it's moving exactly in phase. It could be minus 180 degree or plus 180 degree, doesn't matter, <laughs> just against it. Or if there's some damping in the system, it could be anything between, okay? And this three value you can put just in a simple mathematic formula, Let's say the position of my mass it depends on the amplitude, on the frequency, omega 2p by f, plus its phase level. And this has to just multiply with the time, okay? In this simple example here, where the, the force on the mass and therefore the acceleration only depends on the elongation of that system to the whole point here, the simple in mathematics get quite quite simple. And if you put it in, skip that, we don't need to understand that. It comes out of that formula, yet, yet you should keep in mind. I like to explain it here. It tells us that the frequency of the swinging system, the natural frequency, depends on 2p, it's just a constant. Yeah, Just type it in, but you don't have to understand it. Um, by the square root of z, it is the stiffness of the feather, divided by the mass. That means four times higher stiffness, double the frequency. Let's try this out. So this will be the frequency three, small stiffness, okay? Same mass, stronger spring, <laughs> okay? Yeah, yeah. So now it's double, it's almost double it, all right? Now the other way around, the soft spring, add now with a much smaller mass, it's just really much lighter, let's see. And also here we have a really high natural frequency. This is the basic form you should understand as an acoustic engineer. Higher mass will drop the frequency, a higher stiffness will rise the frequency. That's the basic effect. For this angle between the input and the output signal, there's also a formula, I like to show it here. It's not very well known, but it's really useful to have this understanding up and down in just a formula. If omega that we stimulate is below omega zero, this term will stay positive inside of the bracket. So arcus tangens from something positive will give us something between zero and 90 degree. That's what we see, it moves in phase, yeah? But depending on beta, if beta is higher, and it could move a little bit earlier to a phase deviation, okay? If we are above the own frequency, the eigenfrequency, then the lower term will be minus and arcus tangents will give us between something between 90 and 180 degree, okay? Depending on better. But and if better is zero or almost zero, if there's almost no damping, a little bit damping is always, some air is also damping, then there will be just a flip over from there to there. It could be zero or 180 degree with no damping, there is just these two options, okay, that we see here also on the mass. And if omega is equal to omega zero, so we stimulate in its eigenfrequency, yeah, then this full term below will be zero, so the full term inside of the bracket will be very, very high, and arcus tangents from a high level gives us the angle of 90 degree. That's what we see, just a phase shift pushing the swing. It's all in the formula, so write this down. It gives you a good understanding. All the time we just look in a system of one degree of freedom. We're only looking at the distance from that to that point. Let's add another mass, another degree of freedom with its own mass, own spring, okay? So just... Like this. <laughs> 
this is smaller mass and I can adapt of course the stiffness by changing the size here so like this move it up we've learned a lot the easiest way to understand the swinging system is to give it the impact and we see this is really slow and this has a completely higher frequency and both is in that system that means if I'm stimulated with his own frequency he will do high amplitude and he is bounded to the system. He has to follow also high amplitude, even if it's not his frequency, because they are bounded together. Okay. Now I'm trying to stimulate his eigenfrequency. There we are. So now we see he's completely jumping and of course this has an effect on his movement as well. So this system with two degree of frequency have two eigenvalues to eigenfrequency to own natural frequency and also in the phase we see two times there is a suddenly a change in the phase deviation and now we come to the pan so where is the masses and the spring in the pan well actually you have to think every part of the pan has a mass and if i move it out of the plane the surrounding area is connected with it with springs because it's a metal it will pull it back so if i get out there it will be come back again because of the surrounding this is is a complex grid of masses and springs i try to simulate that <laughs> so we hook all masses in here so in your mind it's easy to imagine this pan is a combination of small masses co connected with a lot of springs with high stiffness the effect is we have high frequency content in there no, the low mass only has two or three hertz that we can see that's why i use it to explain it now smaller masses higher stiffness all frequency come up two effects and all are combined in a way together we have multiple degree of freedom actually a lot <laughs> so if i impact now this whole complex system there is a lot. Some frequency can easily be seen and are taken by a lot, like we see before, but there is even a higher overlaid frequency on different area. And this depends, of course, if I add a small mass anywhere, the full system gets new frequency, and it's very difficult to say in advance what will happen now. Well, now it's even deeper here, but this, everything is changing now. To, to deal with real complex system, there's one way to simulate the full system. You need all the stiffness, the masses and the damping and have simulation software or also possible, you measure it. So I have a clear defined impact and see what reaction will be at all points. And this I will show you, and that will be the one when we get now the FRS of this pan in the last part of the series. See you there.